Well, we got the potato fired up today and we're gonna test once and for all if debloating Windows 11 is worth it. And this time, we're doing it on a system that just barely runs Windows 11. Stay tuned. All right, fine. I can admit when I'm wrong. My last test of a debloated install of Windows 11 was done on this system right here when I tested Tiny11 several weeks ago. This system by far is faster than the average system. And I even said in that video that it probably would have been a better idea to do the review of Tiny11 on a lower spec system. I definitely heard it from the comment section too. Many of you guys agreed that testing it on my system wasn't gonna show the real world improvement that you would get from a debloated install of Windows. So, I started over on our old potato here that we have kept around for times exactly like these. But this time, we're not gonna be testing Tiny11, but rather a template for NT Lite called GamerOS. This is a debloated install of Windows 11 that was intentionally created to increase gaming performance. And we're also gonna be not using my system, but this potato right here, which is a very low spec system that should be able to take full advantage of whatever improvements we get from a debloated copy of Windows. In fact, this system right here is an AMD FX 4300, which is a quad core processor, but in reality is more like a dual core with hyper threading. The system also has eight gigs of DDR3 and is running two SSDs one SSD for the operating system and another one for games. The system also has a GeForce GTX 1660. Now this system is heavily CPU bound and you'll see that from the benchmarks. The GPU never did much work. That's because all of the games that we tested were set to 720p so we could get the best representation of the system itself and how it performed without the GPU skewing the test results from the benefits that we have from the debloated operating system. Also, one of the other complaints that I got from the last video was that I concentrated on gaming and didn't really touch on productivity. So for that, I used the 3 Mark CPU test as well as PC Mark to give us an idea of how much better the system itself would perform doing everyday tasks like web surfing, office applications, and even content creation. But before we get into the testing, we gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. This week's sponsor is me. If you'd like to support this channel, the best way is to pick up a t-shirt at cybercputech.com. All my t-shirts are extremely high quality and durable. These are the same shirts I wear in videos. So if you like the shirt I'm wearing, then head over to cybercputech.com and pick yourself up one today. I have to say that I was actually surprised with how the results turned out. The first thing I noticed was that the system itself was quite a bit snappier with the debloated install of Windows 11. Now, this is really hard to quantify, but the UI really did feel like it ran smoother. Unfortunately, I didn't really have a way to put that in numbers other than to simply say, yeah, it felt faster. <laughs> With that said, we have to acknowledge the fact that this system doesn't even come close to meeting the system requirements for Windows 11. So, in its factory state, it was a, it was a very sluggish OS. But after debloading it, it felt like the system could be used on a daily basis. I mean, that is if you took all my other computers away and I had no other choice. So obviously my perception of performance is going to be kind of subjective. But what wasn't subjective was the benchmarks. So to start out with, I'm gonna look at the productivity benchmarks. The first one we're looking at today is the 3 Mark CPU test. The CPU profiles from this test I'm going to concentrate on are the max thread score and the single thread score. On the factory install of Windows 11, we got a max thread score of 637. Once installing a debloated copy of Windows 11, we got a max thread score of 636. So there really wasn't any difference in the max thread score. However, these numbers mean nothing without context. To put this into perspective, my Ryzen 5 5600 that I did the original video on gets a max thread score of 5721. So if anything, the test shows that the CPU we're using for these tests is much lower spec. In the single thread test, it wasn't much different. With the factory install of Windows 11, we got a score of 211. Once installing the debloated copy of Windows 11, we got a single thread score of 212. Again, 
Not much improvement. And just to put these numbers into perspective, again, my Ryzen 5 single thread scores are 888. So we didn't really see much performance improvement in 3D Mark, but just to give you some spoilers, this was the only test that didn't see an improvement. The next test we're looking at today is PC Mark. Now, there's a lot to this test, so let's jump right into it. With the factory install of Windows 11, we got an overall score of 3007. Now, once installing a debloated copy of Windows 11, we got an overall score of 3099. Now, that's only a 3% improvement, but it is an improvement. However, to break this down a little bit further, we have to look at the different test groups that PC Mark used. The first one is Essentials. And this covers application startup, web browsing, and video conferencing, and things like that. With the factory copy of Windows 11, we got a score of 5340. Once moving over to the debloated install of Windows 11, we scored 5127. This is a 4.1% decrease in performance. However, though, this is kind of understandable because there may be certain features within Windows that are disabled in the debloated version, causing this score to go down a little bit. My first impression was application startup not being as fast if the operating system isn't caching programs to increase startup times. I don't know if that's truly the case, but that's what I blamed it on. However, moving over to the productivity test groups, this would include office applications and different workloads like that. On the factory install of Windows 11, we got a 3743. But once moving over to a debloated copy of Windows 11, we scored a 4295. That's a 13.7% increase. And I have to admit, I was a little shocked at that one, but it explains why the operating system would feel so much snappier as I had described before. And the final test group is digital content creation. This would include photo editing, video editing, and rendering. With the factory install of Windows 11, we scored a 3694. But once moving over to a debloated copy of Windows 11, we scored a 3670. Now, this is a loss, but it's only a loss by 0.7%. So for this one, I think it falls within margin of error. Now, as you can see, there are some substantial performance increases that could be obtained in Windows 11 after debloating it. I mean, a 13.7% increase in productivity apps is actually pretty good. But now it's time to move on to gaming. And this is where I think I was surprised the most. Now, I benchmark a lot of games because I wanted to get the biggest sample size of all different genres old and new. So let's take a look at what we got. The first game we're looking at is Black Mesa. This is a fairly old game that's a remake of the original Half-Life in the Half-Life 2 engine. It doesn't take a lot of resources to run this game, and it'll pretty much run on a potato fairly well. In the factory install of Windows 11, we averaged 107 FPS. That was very playable, and during the test, the CPU averaged around 60 to 70% usage, while the GPU averaged about 30 to 40% usage. But once moving over to the debloated copy of Windows 11, we averaged 112.7 FPS. That's a 5.2% increase, and the CPU and GPU were roughly the same usage. So I'm pretty happy with how the first test came out. Let's move on to the next one. The next game we're looking at is CSGO. Now, the template that we used for this debloated copy of Windows is GamerOS, and it was specifically built with CSGO in mind. So if any game is going to see an improvement, it should be this one. With the factory install of Windows 11, we averaged 62.4 FPS. That's playable, but just barely. Also, during these tests, the CPU averaged between 60 and 70% usage, and the GPU stayed at around 30%. Once moving over to our debloated copy of Windows, we averaged 74.7 FPS. That's a 17.4% increase in performance, and the CPU and GPU usage was roughly the same. So, if your goal is installing a debloaded copy of Windows 11 to play CSGO, then this one is an astounding win. The next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, if you want to play Cyberpunk, this is not the system you want to play Cyberpunk on. But I definitely wanted to include it in these benchmarks because it's one of the more modern AAA games and it's known for putting systems on their knees. 
With the factory install of Windows 11, we averaged 22.3 FPS. That's just completely unplayable. Trust me, I know because I had to play it to do this benchmark. It wasn't fun, but it did give us what we wanted with maxing out the CPU usage throughout the entire benchmark, while the GPU stayed at around 40%. This can account for the improvement we got with a debloated install of Windows 11 when we averaged 26.8 FPS. Now, you might say, that's still unplayable, and I would agree, but it's an 18.3% improvement over the factory installed Windows with about the same CPU and GPU usage. Now, like I said before, this is not the system you want to play Cyberpunk on, but we can't deny that debloating Windows definitely helped this game a lot. The next game we're looking at today is GTA 5, and unlike Cyberpunk, this actually is a game that a lot of people running systems like this would want to play. With the factory install of Windows 11, we averaged 44.9 FPS, and during the benchmark, the CPU averaged between 90 to 100% usage, while the GPU averaged about 40% usage. So I was expecting a pretty big jump with the debloated copy of Windows, and wasn't disappointed. With the debloated copy of Windows, we averaged 48.6 FPS. That's a 7.9% increase in performance. Now, this is still a result that gives us mediocre performance at best, but there is a pretty big jump in that mediocre performance. The next game we're looking at is Red Dead Redemption 2. This is another game that is probably outside of what you would want to play on a potato like this, but it does give us a good platform to do these benchmarks. With the factory install of Windows 11, we averaged 24.8 FPS. And during these benchmarks, we averaged between 95 to 100% CPU usage with a GPU that was about at 40%. Once moving over to the debloated copy of Windows, we averaged 26.8 FPS. That's about a 7.8% increase with roughly the same CPU and GPU usage. Now, I have to admit that playing Red Dead Redemption 2 at under 30 FPS is not going to be fun whether or not you're running a factory install of Windows 11 or a debloated install. But the debloat definitely won. The next game we're looking at today is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This would have been the top AAA game when this system was actually current. With a factory install of Windows 11, we averaged 63.2 FPS. This is with the CPU maxed out at 100% during the entire benchmark and the GPU ranging between 40 and 50% usage. Now, this is the first test where I saw a difference in GPU usage on the debloated copy of Windows. On the factory install of Windows, we saw between 40 and 50%, like I just stated. However, in the debloated copy of Windows, while the CPU was still maxed out at 100%, the GPU ranged between 50 and 60% usage. So, this game was able to take advantage of the GPU on the debloated copy of Windows a little bit more. And that gave us an average FPS of 67.3. That's a 6.3% increase from the factory install of Windows 11. So it seems that Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the debloated install of Windows, allows just enough headroom from the CPU to allow the GPU to do a little bit more work, giving us a pretty good boost in performance. As you can see from the tests, we got a pretty substantial boost in performance in pretty much everything we tried. However, we have to keep this in context because half of these games that I tested were essentially unplayable on this system regardless of whether or not we were running a factory install of Windows 11 or a debloated install. Keep in mind that under 60 FPS, a game really isn't that playable. Many of these benchmarks were well under 60. Some of them were under 30. So in those cases, while we did see a boost in performance, it really wasn't enough to make the games actually playable. But you know what? We did see some improvements in our productivity scores. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I did notice a difference by simply moving around and using the Windows 11 UI. But was it worth running an install of Windows 11 that's essentially crippled in many ways? Now, I have to say that a system that doesn't meet the Windows 11 system requirements, there might be a great argument for using a debloated install of Windows. But on a system that does meet the system requirements, like, you know, my system here, there really isn't a benefit. 
We saw that in my last video. It really doesn't make much of a difference whether or not we're running a factory install or a debloated install on a system that's high spec like this one. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't system specs between my system here and this potato right here that would benefit from a debloated copy of Windows. There's also more reasons to debloat Windows than performance benefits. In fact, one of the main benefits to running a debloated copy of Windows is getting rid of telemetry. And for that, it may be worth it for you. However, there's a lot of that can be done on a factory install of Windows by simply disabling telemetry. So ultimately, I'm still undecided on this. Yes, doing these tests on a potato definitely showed us a much better performance boost. But all the games that were playable on the system in the debloated copy of Windows were still playable on the factory install too. They were just a little bit better on the debloated one. In fact, a lot of the games that we tested probably could have been improved upon even more by simply going through the game settings and tweaking them like I've shown in other videos. The decision on whether or not to run a debloated copy of Windows is still going to come down to your system specifically and what you want out of that system. Keep in mind that there are side effects to running a debloated copy of Windows. It could be compatibility problems or just broken components within Windows. So ultimately, I'm going to have to decide with the best way to improve your performance in Windows is to upgrade your hardware. <laughs> you know, you're going to see a lot more benefit. But if you're not capable of doing that, then maybe using a debloated copy of Windows is the next best thing. But if you'd like to know how to speed up your games without debloading Windows, check out this video that I did quite a while ago that shows you how to tweak your settings within games to give you some pretty good performance increases. Anyway, as always, you guys have a great day.